today, we're going to get back to the pauldron. The pauldron. Okay, so if you skip this diving demo, whatever, that's fine. Um, our pauldron is flat. Our paper is flat. Our pauldron will be shaped this way. Theoretically, when we're done, this pauldron will also be shaped this way. Um, one of the things you have to think about, though, is when you're doing all your shaping and you want to do all the embossing that we're about to discuss, uh, it's easier to do it flat and then shape it than to try and do all of your detail work while it's stretched over some sort of curved form. So generally it's a good idea to take the time, flatten it, wait, then do your drawing, and then take the time to unflatten it again. And I know it seems counterproductive, but I'm lazy. And it's so much easier to just let gravity do the work, draw on a flat surface, and then add your contouring. So that's what we're going to do. Um, it's dry again, shocker. And if not, um, it's probably going to be molding. So you want to make sure that it's dry when you're done flattening it. And then, ironically, we're just going to wet it. So you want to make sure that it's nice and uniform. And then off camera. Amazing. So if you don't want work sludge on your workstation, it's always nice to have some paper towels to just Absorb all of this. Look at that beautiful debris. And we're just going to let the veg tan soak that up so it gets soft enough to work. Right? We're going to take advantage of this Sharpie mark that we have to sort of give ourselves a perimeter. We have a couple of tools you can use, but if you don't have them, we're going to go through everything you need to do your transfer. Um, these are called wing dividers. They have a little screw. They allow you to adjust the time to whatever width you want. This can give you a very nice standard. Um, but if you're not going to pay $20 to $30 for a fancy pair of one of these, um, you can just use a wood block of your desired thickness. So I'm going to set my wing dividers to the thickness of the wood block, which is 3 quarters of an inch, luckily, because our industry has standards. There we go, three quarters, same thickness. And what you can do is you can use the wing dividers to trace along your Sharpie mark. And yes, I'm making a small gouge in the black pen mark, but that's okay. And this is going to give us a nice little inset, okay? So it's called an inset when you're going inside your picture, and it's called an offset when you're going outside your picture. So there is, let's get this closer. Come here, camera. There we go. There is my super vague line. Can you see it? Barely? Yeah. So uh, you can do the same thing with your wood block, a little bit faster. So I'm lining my wood block up in line with my Sharpie mark so that when you see the space between here and here, I can use a burnishing tool. And this burnishing tool is just a piece of polished agate. We're gonna switch through three different burnishing tools because it's the same thing. And I like doing the, um, the block offset because it gives you something to push against. The wing divider is such a light mark, it's really hard to keep track of. So here, there is our burnished mark with the I get burnisher. And we're going to go a little further down and do the same thing with just the random steel ball. And then we're going to go super cheap. And you're going to go, wow, these are all identical. That's, that's the goal, right? So we've got the ball. It's doing the same thing. There we go. So this is the ball on that line. They don't look any different. And last, we're going to do the Sharpie. So again, I'm just making sure that as I do my alignment, I've got my wood block lining up with my leather, and I can just press, okay? So when I do my offset, it doesn't have to be super precise. It's just sort of giving me a good perimeter to work off of for my designs. So that I can lay a perimeter put whatever detail I want on the inside of my armor. Right. So, can 
go. There is, this is the Sharpie emboss. This is our steel ball. And then this is the agate and the Sharpie again. So if you can't tell the difference, it's pretty good. So we'll give it a little more water. We'll emboss the whole thing. And it's a pretty quick process, as long as you know what you're doing. And that is literally just sort of pinning down your wood block to the edge of your Sharpie mark. And then on the other end, just using the back of your Sharpie to draw that same layer. And the interesting part is when you get to the curves, you're going to find it's actually better, your eyes are better at tracking that curve than the straights. But when you're at the straights, it's nice to be able to take advantage of that, um, that offset that you're block works on, right? Because it's the same thickness is the same thickness is the same thickness. But since the material isn't curved, um, when you hit the curves, you realize that your brain is smarter than the block, which we would hope, right? You want to have a brain smarter than your block. So there we go. We gotta get the last of the taper. I've got to make sure that when I do this, you can see most of what I'm doing, otherwise you're just watching some nonsense, right? So as we go through here, press down nice and hard. So as we make these prints, you can come back and carve everything out if you want, or you can just press in really hard. This. Is what we're looking at. So we've got this this emboss mark here, this emboss mark there, and the way the lighting goes it's kind of hard to tell. So as I rotate it you can get a nice view of what that perimeter looks like. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is set it up for a time-lapse and spend a lot of time scribbling. 